Well, winter's still hanging on here in Nova Scotia. And I did a stupid, made a stupid mistake last night. I, one of those things that I don't know what happened. I overlooked it. I left my uh, pressure washer outside last night. I washed my work truck and uh, I left my pressure washer outside. It got to minus four this morning. So hopefully, hopefully it's not frozen and busted. And if it is, it's a lesson learned. That's for sure. Definitely cold enough that I need to wear gloves. In a little shed here, it's not so bad. My friend Joe Lesko made this sheath. You'll see it in every video. I, it's, it's amazing. It's the best sheath I've ever had. And there's some things about it that I didn't even realize how much I would enjoy this uh, horizontal carry. And big thing for me is it's, it's not in the way of your seatbelt when you get in the car. So when I climb in my truck with my other sheath, I've got to sort of position that sheath out of the way so that I it's not, you know, I get seatbelt in and out. So anyway, a bonus that I didn't even know about. Kind of cool, eh? Look at the label again. Ten degree, forty-five thou, inch and a quarter blades what you're about to witness is a workplace injury hopefully not ha nothing to it Now, I do have new blades on the wall over there, but we're going to take one right out of the bottom of this stack, like that. And we're going to hang these up. Now my sawmill takes a 158 inch blade and as they come out of the box these blades are inside out so I have to turn them which is no big issue at all I just step on the, the bottom of it so that the teeth roll away from the concrete give it a little flip now the teeth go the right way when I built my sawmill I built it so that it would run almost opposite of every other mill that you see on the on the market. So the sawdust runs away from the operator instead of to the operator because I didn't want the sawdust out in my yard. There. I guess that wasn't as bad as I thought. The bearing feels good. The bearing feels good. All right. I'm going to get a grease gun. I'm missing one grease fitting and every time I go to Princess Auto I want to pick up a, an assortment of those grease fittings but I always forget so the next time I go see I lost that, that knife that fast now it's habitual for me to to pull that knife out of the horizontal sheath not like it was it took me about a week to get used to sliding that in like that without any problem it's not even eight o'clock yet here <laughs> i'm on my second batch of coffee i know i talk too much but, and i'm reminded of that almost every video so I clean off all the grease fittings. I have these lock, a lock and lube, which I think is amazing. It's just the only thing about this lock and lube, it's a little too big for the drive shaft of my tractor. So I have to put a, like a needle on it. I'll give that a squirt or two or four or five. And 
this fellow in here is a little tricky. Still using winter washer fluid because it does get cold, as I just alluded to a minute ago. I don't want my blade lube system to freeze up. So and I run a little bit of windshield washer fluid year round, just enough to break the surface tension in the water. This is a, a Craftsman, Sears Craftsman wrench. I had, this wrench is about 43 years old, I would say, when I was 10 or 11, 12 years old. I got a set from my parents for Christmas, and this was one of the wrenches that was in that kit. I still have the sockets. I still use them today. And this little 5 16th wrench, I think I got the whole set right up to an inch and a quarter or something like that. It would have been a big set for a kid. At that time, I was racing go-karts, and I was traveling with my dad all over the place. We had some good sponsors. My uncle owned a trucking company at that time, and he paid for me to travel all over the place. And uh, I learned a lot from him. He was a sweet, sweet guy, my Uncle Harry. I don't know of anybody that has a bad thing to say about him. He's just like my dad. My dad was the sweet, is, is I say was, but he is. Um, he's going to be 80 on his next birthday and still hardworking. Just the sweetest man I know. I want to be just like my dad when I grow up. Fresh, brand new blade. I got a list here beside me. We're going to go through that list and see what makes sense. I've got my truck over here parked to receive the lumber because this is a, an order I'm going to deliver. I don't really have, and I don't like actually, I know this might sound selfish, but I don't like too much anyway, uh, customer pickup. And the reason is it never fails. Somebody says they're coming at three o'clock and it's 20 after three or three 30. And my next job has been foiled. So I'll offer delivery, charge a little tiny bit for that delivery. Enough to cover my fuel. Price of fuel is going down, going down here. Diesel's going down anyway. I don't use anything very much with gasoline. This runs gasoline, but uses such a little amount. I would go through 20 liters in, you know, two full days of milling. Full days, you know, eight-hour days of milling. So not enough to even uh, consider worrying about. The mud wasps have made a, a little nest in the bottom of the evaporative emissions hose. I'm going to cut that off. Cut a little inch off of that, just to, so that engine can breathe. Yeah, there's a the little critter right there. I assume that's their, their eggs. I'm not sure. They lay an egg in there, but I got to keep an eye on that. Got to keep an eye on my fire extinguishers as well. They'll build a muddy plug in the bottom of the discharge hose of your fire extinguisher. So if you've got a fire extinguisher on your tractor or your ATV or your, like me and my sawmill shed, I give that a, a look all the time to make sure that, that it's, uh, it's decent plug is, uh, or it's not plug. So today I need seven, six by sixes, eight feet long. I need 10, two by sixes, eight feet long. This is the big order. This is the big one. I need six pieces of two by 12, 10 feet long. So I need a fairly good size log to get that one by eight, 10 feet long, 14 of them, one by six, 10 feet long, five of them. One and a quarter by five inches, 12 feet long. I need 10 of them. That's a good order, too. Um, and that's for stair treads. And they'll put two together, so they'll have a 10-inch you know, inch, inch tread and put a bullnose on it. And eight pieces of one by six by eight. So the one by six by 10, I think I have already milled. The two by six by eight, I probably already have milled. And the one by six by eight, I definitely have milled. So let's concentrate on the two by 12 by 10. I think I have a 10-foot log staged over there it's got the bark off of it. It's uh, a white pine, but it looks fairly clear. It's going to be it's going to be just fine, I think, for for this. So, anyway, let's go get a log and get more.
see how well that blower is working today. That's just residual sawdust that's left in the hose and in the, in the shield here. And that'll blow like that for a few minutes and it'll shut that off. And will I turn the log with that clearance lung. So. so that pile of sawdust that's over there, I'll come in with the loader and I'll move that around and make some landfill out of it. But there's also a little stream. A little tiny bit of water that runs in here continuously. It doesn't matter how dry it gets in the summer. You can see the bulrushes here, so it's obviously a dry spot. But when we get a rain, that will wash a lot of that water away, or that sawdust away. So you environmentalists, let me know what you think of that. Is this organic debris? There's no, um, no oil or petroleum product of any kind in there. It just gets washed away, turns into landfill. I can't imagine how that can be hard on the environment. Um, it's not a stream, it's not a natural stream. It, it, I guess it eventually would make it to the river, but it just flows over our land and just goes into the ground, in and out of the ground half a dozen times. So anyway, let me know what you think of that. So, so this is a, a piece of fairly clear white pine. I see one knot that might, might be a troublemaker. I'm not sure when I get it flipped over, I'll probably try to capture it in a board. But I'm thinking in my mind of the lumber that has to come out of that. There's uh, one by eight by tens. I need 14 of them. So I'm gonna get, a half a dozen of those out of this, so part, most of that order, even half of that uh, one by ten order out of this one log. I'm going to get all of the two by twelves. I only need six two by twelves out of this log, so I'm going to get all of them out of this one log plus some one by eights. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then we're going to find seven logs that make eight foot six by sixes after this. So, so I'm going to uh, turn this log. You can see it's heavy. It's about a 1,200 pound log. That's all my tractor can lift. It's funny, I've said that a lot, but I seem to get a, a log that's a little heavier than the last log and the tractor still seems to be able to lift it. So one day this tractor's gonna protest and the axle just front axle's just gonna blow apart. I wouldn't lift that log without the backhoe on. It needs that extra bit of ballast. So anyway, I'm gonna turn this log and we're at a 12 inch height. So I'm gonna turn that 90 degrees and I, I double checked it with my square to make sure that my backstops are perfectly square and they are. I'm thrilled with how this mill stays in adjustment for the abuse it takes dropping logs and flipping logs. And you know, that that's a hard slam, but I have a bunk, a very substantial bunk every 30 inches to catch the weight of the log. So I'm not all that concerned that it's, uh, it's gonna bend anything anyway. It's absolutely gorgeous here today, 8.30. I've got my day started. I'm gonna finish this order today. And I've got, like I said, I think I might've said, I've got 20 bundles of firewood to make today just for the rental shop up the road. That's a weekly weekly thing. Sometimes it's 20, sometimes it's 40, sometimes it's 10, but he restocks back up usually for the weekend. So, and I've got some dry softwood and I split, you've seen me split some of that oversized hardwood, which has been cut for a year. So. I'll, I'll rob some bits of firewood out of that. So this is going to be a long video. And if you stay this long in the video, you get a prize. I have no idea what that'll be, but we'll figure something out. Maybe if you came here, I'd give you a free bag of sawdust or something. Got lots to go around. All right, back to work. So that was my first 2x12 off of that cant. So now I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 boards to edge, which is 10 inches beside that. So I'm going to, where we're down to 10 inches from the deck, 12 inches wide. We're going to keep slicing these off till we get to the bottom of the deck. All of these have a milled edge somewhere. So we're gonna stand these up. 
And we're going to edge these all at the same time. Find my gloves here again. <clears throat> and I'll probably edge all of them at 11 inches and see what happens because I don't want to start cutting into my into my 10 inch cant obviously because I don't want to ruin the chances of me getting more more 2x12s out of this so put the milled edge down the milled edge down might be able to do 12 inch we'll see what a 12 inch does gonna end up with one by eight so to the end of all of this there's one without a milled edge and here's one without a milled edge you see these uh, lumber looks like rippled potato chips and I don't like that look I like much smoother lumber so this blade must have a tooth that's out of set which is unfortunate and that's out of set right from the right from the get-go right from the factory so we want to stand these up but it's not as critical that they're all perfectly straight as it would be if you had a two inch piece there we go and the reason is you're not the edge not not going to matter especially if you're making siding I wouldn't be all that fussy about making sure they were perpendicular to the bunk, but make them as straight as you can get them, obviously. Now, if I wanted to be quick with this, which I could be, I would cut this all off at, uh, looks like about, if I just did a 10 inch cut, Cut all these off at 10 inch, throw the edges away, flip them all upside down, and then cut my next 2 by 12 off at 8 inches. That would make everything here 8 inches. Some of them are going to be 6 inches because there's just not enough meat in them to get 8 inches, but you'll get, I'll get enough of them. I'll, get, I'll bet you I'll get 6 or 7 out of it. Yeah, so the next thing I need to do, obviously, is open up my the throat on my saw because we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven we got 23 inches we got to cut through so you know when i i watch nathan from out of the woods i like his channel i like what he's doing lately he's doing more of a vlog style What's going on in his life with his chickens and his cats and tractors and excavators and that kind of business but when i see him mill his lumber his lumber all comes out looking like this wavy um uh, not even sure what it, like ripple potato chips and to me that's disappointing i'd be i'd be a, a bit disappointed in that if i was buying that lumber so i don't want my lumber to look like his lumber I'm yelling at the camera, I'm yelling at the TV when I watch his videos, like speed up or slow down or check your set or do something different. So, but anyway, he's got a method behind his madness. He's been at it a long time. So, although I think I've cut way more board feet than he has, even though he's got an $85,000 mill, I think that I've, uh, I've cut more lumber than him. I think he's more of an, in the YouTube creator more than he is a lumber creator and i'm still a lumber creator that dabbles on youtube so maybe the at some point that uh, the tables will turn but anyway pitter patter
So that one log, we ended up getting our six pieces of 2 by 12 They're $25 each. So that's 150 bucks worth of 2 by 4 Where did you put my gloves? I accept your apology. <laughs> and we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of 1 by 8 And we got... Three pieces of one by six. Three pieces? Yeah, three pieces of one by six. So we got well over $220 out of that log. And that was just in a matter of 40 minutes. And these two by 12s are beautiful. I was worried about one big knot that was in it, but it turned into be something I didn't need to worry about. I think the mill that I have, I can't believe I've, I've been able to make a living with a homemade mill. It's so rewarding to take a piece of machinery that you've built yourself from scratch, literally from scrap metal and new metal and Princess Auto deals and flyers that I've been watching for parts and bits for years. This is my second sawmill. And to be able to make a living with it in a processor, firewood processor, of course. So that's going to be eight feet. I might put that one in my pile. It's got a few bug holes in it. As does that. That's a nice one. That's a good start to that order. And it's barely nine o'clock. So anyway, you guys don't need to see this anymore. I might do a time lapse of some boards or something like that. I'll see what else. The other half of this log is in the pile, which is 10 feet as well, but it's got a big cavity, big void in it. So I'm not gonna get nearly the yield that I get out of this, but I'm thrilled that this turned out as good as it did. So thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Remember I'm on this kick to try to get my channel snuck into the algorithm somehow. And I'd appreciate it if you guys would show me the love. So have a great weekend, everybody.